Uh, Mark, and on this channel, I talk about Europe and the EU. The UK left the EU political structures and the European Parliament on January 31st in 2020. But the EU, of course, moved forward after the UK left with Brexit. But what happens in the EU today? So let's talk about today's topic. The Commissioner for Crisis Management, that's Yenas Lelacic, was in Armenia to coordinate the EU's assistance to the country in light of the mass exodus of people from Nagorno-Karabakh. This follows President von der Leyen's meeting with Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan in Grenada, where a series of EU support measures were outlined. The visit comes as a plane carrying EU emergency supplies is due to arrive in Yerevan at the same time. The aid flight is part of the European humanitarian response capacity, which has been activated to, to provide support to humanitarian organizations on the ground there. Mobilizing its humanitarian stockpiles, the EU is delivering hygiene kits, kitchen sets, blankets, solar LEDs and solar flashlights to EU humanitarian partners who will then rapidly distribute them to the people in need. This aid flight was therefore to help support people in need with shelter and accommodation essentials. Furthermore, the Commissioner discussed the latest support mobilized via the EU Civil Protection Mechanism, which was activated on September 29th upon a request from Armenia. So far, Austria, Germany, Lithuania, Norway, Poland, Romania and Sweden have offered urgently needed shelter equipment and food and also medical supplies. Belgium, Bulgaria, France, Italy, Luxembourg, Spain and Sweden have offered medical support to assist the mass burn victims of the fuel depot explosion in Stepanakert. The first medical evacuation flight transporting patients for treatment in France landed a few days ago in Paris. A team of EU humanitarian experts have been deployed to Armenia where they are now coordinating with humanitarian partners to assess the developing needs and to ensure a rapid response to the crisis. The EU's Emergency Response Coordination Center is operating 24-7 to coordinate donations via the EU Civil Protection Mechanism to Armenia. And during his mission, the Commissioner met the Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, the Deputy Prime Minister, Tigran Kashatrian, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ararat Mirzoyan, as well as EU humanitarian partners in Armenia. Commissioner Linacic also visited shelters for the displaced from Nagorno-Karabakh. And at the European Political Community Summit in Grenada, President von der Leyen outlined further measures of emergency and long-term support to Armenia. President von der Leyen said, the EU stands by Armenia. We are doubling our humanitarian support to alleviate the plight of the 100,000 displayed Karabakh Armenians. And we are channeling more budget support towards the Armenian state. The EU remains fully committed to supporting the negotiations with Azerbaijan and facilitating the dialogue. But that was not all. The, the, she made some announcements on the assistance, for example, humanitarian assistance. The Commission will more than double its humanitarian aid with a further 5.25 million euros in emergency assistance added to the previously announced 5.2 million. Commissioner for Crisis Management Jenas Lenacic traveled to Armenia, as I said, to assess the situation and discuss the further and more targeted support, notably through the EU Civil Protection Mechanism. And there is an EU for Peace program. The EU for Peace program will be topped up with additional 800,000 euros to support emergency assistance. Confidence building measures are another part and media outlets known for their balanced reporting are another. And there are annual programs. The Commission will mobilize funding under annual programs for Armenia in order to allocate 15 million euros which can be used as budget support to the state to address socio-economic needs and purchases of food and fuel. And they will give technical assistance. The Commission will discuss with the Armenian authorities 
the urgent provision of technical assistance, including through the TAIEX and uh, twinning programs to address issues like air safety and nuclear safety. And uh, there's also the EIP. Uh, the Commission is working on further support to Armenia, including on infrastructure via the Economic and Investment Plan, that's the EIP, which can deliver up to 2.6 billion euros in investments. The EIP is already delivering more than 413 million, which includes extensive assistance to the Sunik region in social protection and sustainable energy solutions. And there will also be regional projects. The Commission will support Armenia's participation in regional projects, in particular in the Black Sea Electricity Cable Project with Azerbaijan, Georgia, Hungary and Romania. In the past two weeks, a uh, few weeks, the EU has already allocated over 10 million uh, euros in humanitarian aid in response to the crisis, as I said. And the priority is to provide cash, assistance, shelter, food security and livelihoods, as well as mental health and psychological support to the refugees from Nagorno-Karabakh. Since the outbreak of the Nagorno-Karabakh uh, Nagorno war in 2020, the European Commission has allocated 31.2 million euros overall in humanitarian aid to provide emergency support to the affected people. EU humanitarian assistance includes food, hygiene and household items, multi-purpose cash assistance, shelter, education and emergencies, health and psychosocial support, medical equipment and a lot of other urgent assistance. EU humanitarian funding is provided in line with the humanitarian principles of humanity, neutrality, impartiality and independence. And if you want to see another video, the next one is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.